Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you what it's like to hike the Timberline Trail here around Mount Hood in Oregon State, just outside of Portland. There is Mount Hood. Beautiful, beautiful trail, classic trail, a uh, historic trail built in the 30s by the CCC. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you what it's like to do the hike. I'll show you what it looks like on a map so you can kind of get a lay of the land, understand what to expect when you get here. But I also have a full guide on hikingguide.com where I talk about itineraries, maps, gear recommendations, uh, planning, permits, all of that fun stuff will be on the web page, which, web page, which I'll keep up to date all the time so that you can uh, refer to that. So I'm not going to talk about that in the, this video. I also have another video. It's a 360 video where you can watch it and you can pan around uh, and look around as I hike so you can kind of explore it in another dimension. But otherwise, in this video, we're going to show you what it's like to do the hike. And uh, as you're watching it, if you enjoy it, if you find it helpful, if you find it fun to watch, if you could do me a big favor and click like little thumbs up that helps other hikers uh, find the video it helps my channel out a lot it's an easy way to say thank you so thank you for that so remember before you hit the trail go to hikingguy.com check all the information out link to that right under YouTube but otherwise let's get going on this beautiful hike all right here's an overview of the trail it's about 42 miles or so usually done clockwise around Mount Hood which is right here the highest point in Oregon I've broken the guide down on the video and the website into three kind of sections from the Timberline Lodge, which is sort of the traditional start, over to Ramona Falls over here, and then from Ramona Falls over to Cloud Cap over here, and then Cloud Cap back to the Timberline Lodge. So that's how I'm going to kind of break it down in this video for you so that it's not overwhelming and you don't have to remember everything at once. So some quick top line points while we're here. It's about 42 miles around the whole shebang here. Um, in this guide, I'm gonna show you a detour because there is a section closed over here from a blowdown. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But we're gonna take the detour, 42 miles, uh, just under 11,000 feet of climbing. The highlights are the views of Mount Hood. You have river crossings, which can be intense, and you'll see in a, in a few minutes here and there are beautiful wildflowers, there are glaciers, and you will go below and above the timber line or the tree line um, on the hike. So you get to see a little bit of everything as you circle Mount Hood. All right, let's start on the first section from the Timberline Lodge over to Ramona Falls over here. So from the lodge, it's a pretty mellow, cruisy section over here till we get to Little Zigzag Canyon which isn't a tough river crossing, but let me just zoom in because I can show you what the pattern is gonna be overall uh, for gullies and canyons, big and small. You're gonna come up to a canyon and then you're gonna wind around either upstream, sometimes downstream, and then come back out and then start hiking back through the trees. Usually there's a little bit of climbing. And if we come over here to Zigzag Canyon proper, you can see that as we come over to the overlook. This overlook is spectacular, um, by the way. We're gonna go down some switchbacks, we're gonna cross the river, and then climb back up the other side and around. Now, after a short stretch here, we're gonna come over to the Paradise Branch. There's uh, great waterfalls and uh, epic views. I'd say, for me, this is probably the second best view on the hike after um, the one on Gnarl Ridge on the other side. But if I go here, I can probably swing it around so you can kind of get an idea of what you see. So when you come to this Paradise Branch, you can see up into this canyon, you can see the summit over here. At this one, you can see the falls down there. And then we're gonna wind all the way down, do the river crossing here, Paradise Branch, and then come up to Ramona Falls. All right, so we're gonna start the hike from the back of the Timberline Lodge. And there's a few ways to get back to the Timberline Trail. This is probably one of the easiest ways. We're gonna just follow this roped off trail and you can see there's a sign there that says Timberline and PCT. We're gonna be on the PCT for a little bit of this loop. And we're just gonna keep on going straight back and uphill away from these little loose trails. And when we get to the top, the dead end, the Timberline goes left. Typically people do it clockwise, but you can do it any way you want. But so this is the first time we'll start clockwise, but if you go to the road, there's a neat PCT sign. There's some views of Mount Hood, which we'll be seeing 
over and over again for the next 40 or so miles. There's the back of the lodge, Mount Jefferson in the back there. And we're going to get started on the Timberline. This is it. We're hiking the Timberline at this point. And right away, there's a sign. Generally, the way it works is that trails off to the left are access trails. Trails off to the right are little loop trails or excursion trails. And straight is the timber line. There's Mount Hood. You can actually ski up there. It's one of the only places I think that has year-round skiing around here. And we're going to go straight. And right away, we have this little V-shaped crossing of a gully. Now there's going to be probably dozens and dozens, if not a hundred or so of these crossings that we'll do the whole time. But this is generally the plan. You're going to cross these little drainages coming down from Mount Hood. Now here you can see a little unofficial campsite. One of the great things about this hike is that you don't need permits for camping or like quota permits. And there are tons of camp uh, or tent sites along the trail. Literally, probably every 10, 15 minutes, you might find a nice tent site down here. Here we're passing a sign memorializing uh, Timberline Cabin, which was one of the first cabins that was up here, not the Timberline Hotel, but the cabin. And then we're going to pass uh, one of the trails, the Mountaineer Trail. And you can see it's all very well marked along the Timberline. Any major junction has a trail sign, so that's good. Now here we are at the permit box. Again, it's not a quota permit here. It's more of an awareness permit. You have to sign it and keep it with you. I'll talk more about that on the website. Um, but all you have to do is that. And then right past that, we're going to come to the cool little sign telling us that we are entering the Mount Hood Wilderness. This is all a wilderness area. So ideally, there's no development when you're in the wilderness. Here we are at Little Zigzag Canyon. And this is another typical experience here. Uh, we're going to go around a canyon as we go. And you can see the trail up on the other side. And now we're in the Timberline, or under the Timberline, which is around 6,000 feet, and that's what the trail is named after, because it follows that. Here is the Hidden Lake Trail, down to the left. But yeah, most of the trail, I would say, is in the trees, in the Timberline, which is good. It's nice and shady and uh, picturesque. And on the other side, we're going to pop out of the Timberline for a while and be above it as we go. And here you can see we're heading downhill. If you look at an elevation profile, there's definitely uphills and downhills, but overall when you're on the trail, for most of it, it feels like you're going constantly up and down. One of the great things about the trail is that you don't have to really bring a lot of water. There's a ton of springs and runoff and creeks and rivers to cross where you can get water, so no need to carry a big heavy load of water. And I'll talk about that again on the website. Here you can see we're going to cross this little warm-up canyon there. There's Mount Hood above us. When we get to the other side, over here, this is Zigzag Canyon. You get some nice views here at this overlook. There's the Zigzag River coming down from the glacier and Mount Hood. Now, the Zigzag is typical of a um, this is really a medium river crossing, but I'm going to say a bigger river crossing where you come to the crossings that have a nice big uh, carve. Usually they're a little bit tougher. This is an exception. Another thing that Timberline is famous for are blowdowns and down trees, and you just have to go ahead and cross them. And when not, you can see there's a little detour around it if you can't go directly across it. These are some of the nicer ones. Some of the other ones are a little bit nastier. And there's a detour I'll talk about a little bit later from below downs, but uh, this is typical of the experience. Here we are coming down to the Zigzag River and Zigzag Canyon. And again, this is a smaller river. You can generally hear them as you go downhill. But here's the Zigzag. You can see it goes down. This is one that you can easily walk through. Some of, them, some of the other ones you can't easily walk through. And again, I'll talk about uh, tips for getting across these on the web page. So make sure you go there where I have a lot more information on doing this. But typically the move is you cross 
and then you look for the trail again, which is, you can see down here to the left, and then we climb back up out of the canyon or gully, whatever it might be, and start climbing up again to the next one. And here you can see the climb gets a little more uh, intense here. It's just a series of ups and downs on this trail overall. When we start climbing, we're going to see the Paradise Loop Trail up there to Paradise Park. And park is uh, synonymous with meadow here. It's not an actual park up there, just a big meadow. Here's one of the more gnarly down trees. Actually, this isn't too gnarly, but I just wanted to show it to you to give you an idea of what to expect. And you can see this is a tree and a detour until we get back on the trail. If you have a big pack, you might have to take it off. And again, I'll have strategies for this on the website. There we can see Mount Hood as we start to climb or continue to climb up here. There you can see the trail on the other side, Lost Creek over there. And then we're gonna cross over Lost Creek, which is a good example of a really small one. These are really good places to get water because it's not too silty and you can just hop across it and easily get down and refill your water. And you need to filter it here, uh, definitely bring a filter. And again, I'll talk about that on the website. Now we're going to come up to a nice little overlook here. And you can see that we're going to go around once again. This is the typical playbook. Go down and then go around. And here we are, there's a nice waterfall. There's no crossing here. This is Russian Water Creek, which you'll be able to hear farther down. I like this because it's kind of a hanging valley up here. Neat little view off the edge there, but we're gonna go around, go up. Here's another trail, this is the Paradise Park Trail. This is a trail that goes up to Paradise Park in the meadow there. There's some good campsites. And you can see there's another sign for the PCT and the timber line as we go down here. Now here, the trail goes down there, but we're going to go instead straight to this pretty epic viewpoint. That's beautiful. Paradise Branch Falls, Paradise Branch of the Sandy River. Really one of the better viewpoints on the whole trip. And if we go take a look and go back down the trail back where we were before for a little bit, there's another little viewpoint here where we can see the uh, Paradise Branch Falls. The other falls that we were looking at before were the Upper Falls. These are just the regular falls right there. Beautiful, beautiful viewpoints here. Feels like you're in Switzerland. And then from there, we're gonna head on down to the Sandy River Crossing, which is one of the larger crossings. And again, here's that pattern of going up and down again. And you'll be able to hear it there's the Rushing Water Creek, which we went over before in that hanging valley. And you can see all the debris that's been washed down here over the years. Pretty incredible. This is a constantly changing trail just because of all of the water and all of the organic material that could get moved around. But you can see here, we're going to come out to the Sandy River. And this is very typical. And these crossings change all the time. I'm not going to give you specifics on the crossings, but I'll give you tips on the website. But in general, you're going to come out. You're going to look for footprints in the sand. You're going to look for cairns, uh, other markings where people have crossed before. And generally in the winter, when the waters get high or the spring, these will all change a little bit and leave and change day to day as you go through here depending on what's coming rushing down from the creeks. But we're going to go up and follow that. And here you can see the Sandy River. This is typical. There's a little log over that. You can go across that or you can just go through. And I would say that you probably just want to go through. Um, plan on getting your feet wet or you can go over the log. But if you slip on the log, people have died that way. Uh, it's much better to get a trekking pole, brace yourself, and usually just cross over. And then when you cross over, the trick is finding the trail once again. 
and we're going to go down to the left because we went upstream a little bit when we came down to the Sandy River, but we're going to go to the left, look for Cairns to help us find the trail again, and here they are. I'm just going to follow the Cairns and then come back onto the official trail or the trail where it crossed at one point, probably many years ago, and you know, the trail crossing got moved. Here we are, we're gonna climb away from the Sandy River, kind of follow it downstream for a little bit to the next major junction, which will be for Ramona Falls. And here it is, it's easy to spot because of this big boulder. Now we could go straight if we want, but we're gonna go and visit the falls, which is pretty spectacular. You can see the trails up to the right there, and here are some signs pointing us to the Timberline and Ramona Falls. We're going to head up here. This is a popular day hike, this Ramona Falls Loop. So at this point, you might see a lot more people, and especially at the falls here, Ramona Falls, which is straight ahead. Really spectacular uh, waterfall. Definitely recommend checking it out. It's kind of cascades down the multi-tiered rock right there. We're going to check out the waterfall, soak it all in. It's a good place for a break, for lunch, or whatever you're going to do. And then we're just going to go across the bridge and continue down the Timberline Trail and enjoy these last views of the falls here. All right, so the second segment I'm going to go over here is from Ramona Falls over here on the southwest side up to Cloud Cap, kind of on the north northwest side of Mount Hood. Now, there was a uh, big, massive blowdown on the Timberline Trail right around this section over here uh, on Labor Day weekend, I guess, of 2020. And the trail is closed here as of me writing this, and it probably will be for, I would say, at least a few years, if not entirely rerouted, maybe at some point. Um, so right now I'm gonna show you the what's called the Ramona Falls detour to continue the loop, and this is what most people are doing. So from Ramona Falls, we're gonna come all the way down to the Muddy Creek Crossing, which is pretty easy. And then from down here, we're going to start the climb. And if I swing this around, you can see we have a nice climb up here to um, basically the almost the top of Bald Mountain, which is here. And when you're hiking down from here from Mona Falls, you can see up to Bald Mountain. I'll show you that in a second. We're going to go by Top Spur Junction. If you want to join the trail, you can join that here. There's also um, parking over here, Ramona Falls, which is pretty close. I think this might be a mile and a half in. I'll talk about that on the website. And then we're gonna hike around Bald Mountain, and then we're gonna rejoin the proper Timberline Trail. And this is the detour, this grayed out section over here that we're gonna skip. From there, we have a beautiful hike along um, the ridge here. We have a viewpoint. If I swing around, you can see Let's angles up. You can see we get really great views up to the summit here. We're going to come around to one of the original stone shelters here, Cairn Basin, Lad Creek. The crossings start getting a little more intense as we come over onto the north side, uh, just a heads up. But there are, um, you know, there are usually ways to cross it and Cairns to help you. And I'll talk all about river crossings again on the website. But if we go over here to this North Cascades overlook, you'll be able to see um, Mount Adams, Mount Rainier, and Mount St. Helens over here. And you'll, you'll see them throughout this, this stretch on the hike. So let me swing us back around. And then from here, we're going to come to Elk Cove, which is a great campsite. And then we have some of the more intense river crossings, uh, the Co. We'll come around, and then we do the Elliott Crossing, uh, which is a detour that was put in here in 2017 after a washout, I think in 2006 or seven, somewhere around then. Um, basically what happened was there was a major um, washout down this canyon that washed the whole trail out and they had to reroute it. And you can see when we come down here, this is probably the most, one of the more intense crossings here in terms of the creek, but we have switchbacks going down, we get down to the creek and then we climb back up and we get to the Cloud Cap camping area, and the Cloud Cap Inn is right up here. Okay, so just past the falls, we're gonna to come to the break where the Timberline Trail goes up to the right and the Ramona Loop Trail goes down to the left. Now we're taking the detour because of the 2020 Labor Day blowdown. I'll talk all about the detour on the website, 
but it's probably going to be like that for at least a few years, maybe permanently. Who knows? It's a pretty nasty uh, blowdown up there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the Ramona Loop Trail down here. And again, I'll talk about this on the website so you know what's going on. But we're going to head down along Ramona Creek on this portion of the popular Bay High Callway down to where it gets flat. And if you look up to the right when you get to this point, you're going to see Bald Mountain up there. There it is. That's where we're going to be hiking up to, about 1,500 feet of climbing in a couple minutes or so. Now at the end of the Ramona Loop, if you make the left, you can um, go down to the parking area, which is a good bailout point, but hopefully you don't have to bail out. But otherwise, we're going to go right and do a crossing of Muddy Fork and then start our climb up to Bald Mountain. Now here's Muddy Fork. There's two big logs going across it. It changes all the time. These logs are pretty big, so I'm guessing they're going to be there for a while. But, you know, you could have a big flood event and these things could be gone, in which case you'll have to ford the stream. It always changes. And periodically, the Forest Service, or they used to put bridges across here and they'd get washed away. This is one of the places where there was a bridge. Uh, I think they've just given up on it at this point, but uh, here you can see what it looks like to cross up here. This is a pretty easy crossing relative to the others. And then once you finish that, you're going to have a long 1,500 foot climb up to the top of the mountain or sort of the side of Bald Mountain, the top spur junction. And generally it's shaded. You're going to go through this uh, section of boulders here. It's pretty cool, but that gives you an idea of the steepness and the toughness of this. What makes this a little bit worse too is there's usually bugs here when I do it. Um, so you can see them flying around in front of the camera there. So it makes it a little bit tougher. And I'll talk about the gear you need and bugs and what you need to watch out for on the website. But at this point, we're up at the top of the climb. This is the top spur junction. This is kind of a confusing one. You can go straight. You can go down the PCT uh, or top spur down there. But we're going to make the hard right. We're going to make the hard right, and you're going to pass by another Mount Hood Wilderness sign. And we're going to continue on the trail here. I always like this one section where you uh, come through just past that, where you go through all these trees. It's really uh, beautiful here. And we're below the timber line, way below 6,000 feet at this point. But eventually you come out and you're going to get these postcard views of Mount Hood right in front of you there. You can see on the right, if you look over to the right, that's the blowdown. That's part of the detour over on Yoakum Ridge. Now this is an important turn right here. This is the cutoff. You don't want to go straight, otherwise you're going to go down towards that blowdown. But we're going to do the left-hand turn and go up a short hill on this little cutoff trail. There's a sign for McNeil Point, which is kind of the next big landmark. A little confusing to have it here, but do the cutoff. And then when we get back to the trail, we're going to make the right and start a little bit more climbing. Here's the McGee Trail off to the left, another one of the connector trails. But you can see the Forest Service has been at work cutting trees down or cutting trees through so the trail can go through. There are uh, a ton of blowdowns, at least when I did this in 2021, on this section. All of them have detours. You don't really have to do anything too crazy to get around them here. And I did see Forest Service workers out here trying to clear this out. So maybe it'll be clear through when you get here. But that's how it is, more of a minor inconvenience than anything treacherous or dangerous here. And we're going to continue to climb up. Eventually the ridge gets narrow. You're going to be able to see um, Mount Adams to the trees. That's in Washington State. It's the second highest point in Washington. And eventually we're going to come out on another great viewpoint here. Mount Hood in front of us. Yoakum Falls over there. Yoakum Ridge on the other side, really beautiful. You can see Sandy Glacier up ahead, which feeds the Muddy Fork River that we crossed earlier. But really nice spot, nice spot for a picnic as you come through too. There's a big arrow and a small trail there. We're going to go straight. That's the old and unofficial trail up to McNeil Point, which we're going to give a skip to on this guide. But if you have the time, you can check it out. 
There's a ton of water along here as well. If you need to refill, you should not have a problem um, between here and cloud cap. At this point, we're crossing uh, or passing by two uh, tarns called, uh, unofficially called the McNeil Ponds. There's this one, which was dry right now, and then there's another one, which still has a little bit of water over here. Really, really beautiful. This is a popular camping area for people as well. All around here, you can see all the wildflowers. Here's the intersection with the Mazama Trail, as they say here, named after the local mountaineering club. And we're gonna keep on going straight. If you need to bail out, that's a place you can bail out. But otherwise, we're gonna go straight on a timber line. Beautiful views, Mount Hood straight ahead. It's kind of interesting at this point, we're circling and you're gonna get different views of Mount Hood than you did before. And if you look up there, there's Mount Adams, Mount Rainier, and Mount St. Helens. You get beautiful views of all of those, Mount Rainier being the highest point in Washington State, covered in snow in that picture, and Mount Helens, of course, having erupted in 1980. Here's the intersection with the official uh, McNeil Trail, not down there, up to the right. But if you didn't want to go up to you no know, point, that's the place to do it. That's the official one. But otherwise, we're going to continue there are some uh, stream crossings here, nothing too big. That'll change in a few miles. We're going to do some big ones up ahead here. You can see the trail cross on their side. Even these small ones, you're just going to want to take care when you cross. It is definitely slippery, and uh, you know it can be variable in terms of how much water is going through there. Here's the intersection for the um, Eden Park Trail, which is down there. And you can see there's some damage here. This is all from the $2,011 Lake Fire as we go through. Now over here is the Cairn Basin Shelter. The trail goes straight where I just pointed, but we're gonna make the right and visit the shelter real quick. When they first built the trail, I think there were six of these stone shelters altogether. Now some of them are in ruins and some of them are still standing. I'll show you some of them as we go. That's one of them. And uh, the idea is it's a refuge, right? If you needed to duck out for the night, you could do it there. All right, so here we're coming down to Lad Creek. You can see there's Cairns again. You can see the trail over on the other side. And there's a few different places to cross. Today I'm gonna to go upstream a little bit and follow the Cairns to cross, but there are a few different routes here. And again, these always change. So you need to just be aware and look around for what people are doing recent times. After that, more ups and downs, beautiful wildflowers, a little snow crossing here. The sweet spot to do this hike is late July and August. You get the wildflowers and the streams are usually not as bad as they are earlier. All of these creeks and streams are generally unpassable earlier in the season when the melt is heavy. Here we are at Vista Ridge Trail off to the left. Down there, we're not going to be taking that. We're going to be going straight. You can see again, well-marked Timberline Trail number 600. Here we're going to cross the little meadows. This whole area is called the Weist Basin. Uh, Basin. You can see it's a pretty mellow crossing here. As we continue on the Timberline, and right after this is the Pinnacle Ridge Trail down to the left. We're going to give that a skip too and stay straight on Timberline Trail. You can see there's a little more snow up there, more melt coming into these creeks. And then we have a nice cruisy downhill that has um, some different views of Mount Hood as we kind of come around the north side of Mount Hood. Really beautiful epic views in this section as we head down towards uh, Elk Cove. Another little stream crossing, all pretty easy at this point, at least for the near future. And then right after that, we're going to come to the turn off for Elk Cove, a popular and beautiful campsite that has nice views of Mount Hood. You can see the signs are on the ground. If you don't see signs up on poles, look on the ground. Sometimes they fall off. 
but otherwise we're going to continue straight on the timber line. All right, shortly after Elk Cove, we're going to come down to Coe Creek, which is one of the um, one of the bigger crossings, one of the tougher crossings. You can see there's a good volume and speed of the water. You can also see some places to cross there, some cairns marking it out, and the trail on the other side. You now pick your way through carefully, look for the cairns, and make the move. After that, we're going to climb out of here. And I want to show you this because there's a couple of down trees at a switchback. Um, you know, always keep your eyes open. It's easy when you have down trees to kind of make a wrong turn. So be wary of that. Be careful of that. And on our way to um, Cloud Cap, which is our next big stop, you're going to see some more crossings. These are pretty small. These are a little bit easier than normal. You can see the trail continuing over there, and you can see the snow or I don't know if you call it a glacier down here but it's melting directly into the stream which is pretty cool. A couple little crossings all pretty easy at this point before we get to the Elliott branch which is the tough one on the whole hike probably the toughest one and things change maybe that'll change at some point too but right now that's the toughest one. At the top of this ridge you can see the trail going over there there's the cloud cap in up top there and we're going to do this descent all the way down to the Elliott branch. This is actually a newer detour, a newer part of the trail here, but eventually we're going to get down to the Elliott branch. It's a little bit tricky getting down to the creek. You might have to do a butt slide, trekking poles help as always, but you can see it's moving pretty quickly here. This is uh, in the morning. Generally these things get a little bit more intense in the afternoon depending on how much is melting, how much is left. You can see it's a, it's a pretty substantial crossing here. And again, as always, follow the cairns, use trekking poles, take your time, cross over. And uh, I went across in this one, but I'll show you a little thing of what it's like. Here's somebody crossing behind me. You can see it's pretty intense. Once you're done that, you still have some more crossings ahead of you uh, between here and the Timberline Lodge, but overall, the toughest ones are done. And we're going to start climbing on up here towards Cloud Cap, which is just up this little climb. I say little, a few hundred feet. It's probably not nothing. Here you can see there's another permit station for people starting at Cloud Cap. And then once you get past the permit station, there's a little campground, a little tent site on the left. But we're going to come up to Cloud Cap, which is uh, kind of the other side the zero or 12 o'clock position of the Timberline Trail here at Cloud Cap. And the trail continues up to the right, but I encourage you to visit or take a break down here. There's a neat little picnic ground. There's a water refill station. And you can walk a few minutes up to the Cloud Cap Inn, which used to be a luxury resort, uh, but is closed now. It's actually used by the local search and rescue team. And there it is, neat old place. All right, so for the last section, we're going to go from the cloud cap in and parking area above the tree line and over to the Timberline Lodge to finish up the loop. Now, when we leave cloud cap, you're going to go up Tilly Jane Canyon and we're going to emerge from the tree line. We're actually going to go above the tree line here and it's, it's really nice on this Google Maps area. We're going to go up here. There's a really cool stone shelter there. We're going to keep climbing up and this is an... Uh, really tough climb. It's, it's pretty mellow in terms of the gradient. There's not really steep sections. We're going to come all the way over here to the high point on the trail at 7,335 feet. And there you can see we're also closest to the summit at this point. We're about 1.6 miles away from the summit as the crow flies. So you're going to be close. You can really see the glaciers here. It's beautiful. Now we're going to come down here along um, Gnarl Ridge to the end of Gnarl Ridge, the Gnarl Ridge viewpoint. And this is, in my opinion, the best uh, viewpoint on the whole trail. You get to see the whole here, the whole canyon, Newton Clark Canyon here, the glacier, the, the summit. It's really, really incredible. Uh, this area here is called Newton Clark uh, Moraine, and it's really steep and really rocky. And uh, I, I see a lot of times that this you know, there'll be like little rock slides and clouds coming up from the, the slides here. It's a really intense and beautiful area. 
Now at this point, we're gonna start going downhill. Let me swing us around here. Start going downhill. We're gonna pass um, Lambertson Butte, which is right there. We have a creek crossing right down here, Newton Creek, which can be um, challenging. And these ones on the south side can be pretty challenging as well. And then we're basically doing a series of ups and downs as we do river crossings and we cut across back to Timberline Lodge. We're gonna go through the Mount Hood Meadows ski area, which is pretty mellow, little ups and downs as we go through there. And then we have the White River Crossing, which is another tough one. There's usually two branches to cross. Uh, it can be pretty intense. And then from there, we have a sandy climb back up. We're gonna join the PCT, and then we're back up at the Timberline Lodge. All right, so from Cloud Cap, we're gonna go right up to the trail board and we're gonna hike straight. And off to the left is the Tilly Jane Trail. We're not gonna take that and it's marked so it's easy to figure out. But we're gonna go straight. And then right after the beginning, there's another permit box for people starting the trail here. And then the really cool Mount Hood Wilderness sign letting us know we're back in the wilderness and we are heading uphill up Tilly Jane Canyon up towards the highest point on the trail. Now there's a spur over here to the Elliott Moraine. We're not gonna take that, we're gonna stay left on the Timberline and we're gonna keep heading uphill. And pretty soon after this, we're gonna kind of pop out of the trees. And one thing to note is that it's really sandy here. Some people have a hard time doing this because you have a big backpack on, it's a sandy climb, but uh, you know, you can do it. And here we go. We're popping out of the trees, about to kind of go past the timber line. This is a different type of section here where we're going to go above the tree line. Now, soon you're going to see some of the um, original style rock pile cairns with the log or pole or stick coming out of it. Those were the cairns that were up uh, originally in 1934 when they built the trail. Maybe not those exact stones, but that style was the one that was originally there. Pretty soon we're gonna pass the Cooper Spur Trail, which comes up from down there. And if you look back, we're gonna get some nice views back to Cloud Cap where we came up. And you can see there's another cairn up there, a big rock pile. And that's where we're gonna head over this barren kind of lava field area. Now keep your eyes open for that boulder up there and these little side trails. There's the Cooper Spur Shelter, which is one of the shelters that's still standing right up here. This one's got a metal roof and uh, I think a little chimney in there, a little primitive chimney where you can cook. And you're right in the shadow of the east face of Mount Hood. It's really cool. And if you go inside, you can look around. I don't know if I'd want to stay in here. In a storm, it would be great, but there are uh, numerous campsites around here, or tent sites, I should say, around the shelter if you do want to stay in this area. But otherwise, I'm going to continue. You can see the cairns going up over the ridge over there. And we're way above the tree line at this point. Beautiful, beautiful. Feels much different than the first part of the hike here. And depending on when you do it, you might be crossing some of these. Um, patches of snow, glaciated streams, I guess you would call them. You can see it goes down there. Just take it easy, use your trekking poles. This was late July, almost August, so you know it depends on the, the snowpack and what happens. But here we are at the Timberline High Point at 7,330 or 35 feet, depending on how you're measuring it. We're the closest to Mount Hood at this point. We're about one and a half miles or so away. And from here, it's going to be a nice cruisy four mile downhill. So we start climbing again in earnest. You can see the trail continues down here. More crossings in the snow. I, I love this. I love crossing the, the snow and the glaciers like this. It's, it's such a cool experience as we go across this pretty barren section through the lava fields. There's another cairn, kind of dip back into these gnarled pines. You can see Mount Jefferson over there. That's one of the first times you can see it as we come down, which is about 50 miles south. Now up here is the Gnarl Ridge Overlook, probably the most spectacular, I guess from my, my view, the most spectacular overlook on the trail. 
You can see the Newton Clark Glacier up there. You can see all kinds of waterfalls. On the left is the Newton Clark um, Moraine, which is a huge uh, median moraine field right over there. Once you soak it all in, we're just going to continue down Gnarl Ridge here, back into the tree line eventually. As you go down here, if you keep your eyes open to the um, to the right over there, you're going to see Mount Hood uh, Meadows, which is the ski area back over the, the ridge. Here we can see it. I just got a glimpse of it over to the right over there. We're going to be going through that. It's about five miles from here, um, so not super close, but it is encouraging to be able to see it. Now in front of you, we're not going to go up uh, that, that high point there, Lambertson's. We're going to go down to the left here. It looks a little crazy when you look straight and you see a trail going up there, but we're going to go to the left and past the old ruins of the Norrell Ridge Shelter, one of the original shelters, and start heading back down below the Timberline on the Timberline Trail. And you can see the vibe of the trail changes as we leave the exposed area and head back into the trees here. Now here's the junction with the Gnarl Ridge Trail and the Timberline. You can see it's all well marked. We're going to stay on the Timberline to the right and keep on hiking on our nice cruisy downhill here. Now eventually we're going to come down to uh, Newton Creek right here. And this is one of the tougher crossings and it changes every year depending on what the river has destroyed. You can see here there's a little log. If you don't feel comfortable going over a crossing like this, uh, you should just go through the water. And if you don't feel comfortable at all, you should just not go through anything. Maybe wait till the next morning. But you can see it's pretty swift. It's hard to explain in video, but when you're there, it's a little more intimidating. But once you cross over, we're going to go uphill. Keep on heading uphill. There's a Newton Creek trail joining in from the left. You can see there's a hidden sign for the Timberline Trail up there. And we're going to continue up here and do the next crossing of Clark Creek. There's a permit box here. We only need to do the permit once, by the way, and I'll talk about the permits on the website. So check that out. But we're going to continue heading downhill. Eventually, you're going to see Clark Creek down there. Clark Creek is, uh, it's not small. It's not just a little trickle, but it's not as bad as the larger crossings. Uh, and you can usually hop across it. You can see there's a crossing up there and there's a waterfall up there where we're going to cross again. There's kind of two branches to cross here as we cross this kind of sketchy area of moraine. A little, a little tough. Just go slow. Use your trekking poles and you'll be fine. When you get down here, you can see the water is running quickly, but it is not um, super wide, at least right now, and you can kind of hop over these rocks to get across. It's still... Uh, it's still a feat to do, but uh, you know, it's not as bad as some of the other crossings. Once we get across there, we're going to climb. There's this neat little creek coming through here, one of the branches. And this isn't large at all. It's just uh, it's amazing how beautiful things are on this trail. They don't have to be massive to be beautiful here. And then as we go up, we're going to see a little bit of a bigger waterfall up ahead. And I'm just going to cross over right when we get to the waterfall. Uh, the trail continues on the other side. Now, it's on the edge of the waterfall, so if you don't feel comfortable crossing there, there's the trail. You can kind of go up a little bit. And that's what most people do, just to play it safe. You don't want to slip and go over that waterfall. But once you go through there, we're going to go through Mount Hood Meadows Ski Area. You can see the chair lifts up here. Now, this is all pretty mellow ups and downsies. There's some little use trails to the different ski areas and campsites that people use. Um, all pretty straightforward. You're going to cross some of the larger roads through here. If this is going towards the end of your day. It can kind of seem like forever going through the section. Um, you can see it's well marked. And there's some crossings and little stream crossings as we go. Very beautiful. you got to think, even for a ski area, this is a, a pretty beautiful hike here, even though you're not technically in the Mount Hood Wilderness at this point. We're going to go through and we'll get across this last road right here, this larger road. We're going to look for a junction, which is kind of easy to blow by if you're not paying attention. It's right there. You can see the sign in front of us. And we're going to head to the right here at this trail. 
There you can see it's well marked. We're heading towards Timberline Lodge. For a few miles now, the signs have said Timberline Lodge, which is a nice thing. And here we are back in the wilderness, back with our downed trees, our downed timber on the Timberline Trail. Um, and we're going to head downhill towards the White River, which is right down there. That's a pretty major crossing. That's going to be the last one before we get the end of the hike. When we get here, we're going to enter a kind of peculiar area, the Richard L. Conestum Wilderness. It's a narrow sliver of land, wilderness land, named after the uh, basically the guy who saved the Timberline Lodge when it got shut down in 1955. And uh, I'll talk more about the history of the lodge and Richard on the website if you want to check it out. But here we are at the White River Crossing. There's cairns, there's markers. This is another one that changes, and you can tell by the size of the wash that um, you know there's a lot of flow here. And we're actually going to cross over two branches as we go across here. And you see, I've just crossed the one. That's the first branch, and you can wade across this. Sometimes there's logs. You know, it's the the normal drill, and it can change day to day. You know, if there's like a thunderstorm or something, things can get washed away, or hikers can move things. It's all choose your own adventure, but you can see the hikers in front of us over there. We're going to kind of follow the way they're going. That's a good trick or a tip as you go here to follow other people coming across in either direction. Hopefully they know where they're going. Don't, don't take that uh, as an absolute, but you can see by how small the hikers are, how big the banks are. Getting up and down the banks is part of the challenge on these crossings. But once you cross over the second branch there, the White River, we're going to climb up the other side out of the wash nice views of the river down there and we're going to start a long sandy climb up to the end of the hike at the timberline lodge and there are sections they're not too sandy like this or going through the trees but in general this is kind of a tough one especially this is the end of most people's days now when the trail comes to a t we're going to make the right onto the pct and start climbing up again you can kind of get an idea of how sandy the trail is here as we climb up, you can get beautiful views of Mount Hood as we come up here. And there are some of the trail markers, the traditional cairns, and here you can really see how sandy it is. If you have a heavy backpack and you're, you know, into a 10, 11 hour day, this can be tough. As we come up the ridge, you can see the Timberline Lodge over there. We're almost there at this point. We're going to head up the ridge and get some great, great views down into the canyon below on your right. And you can actually see the ski lifts up uh, above the Timberline Lodge as well as you come up here. And there's one little gully, one little Salmon River crossing right here, and there's the Timberline Lodge. And when we come around, you're going to see the trail basically splits a lot. You can go any way you want here. If you started at the Timberline, you're going to know which way to go. But if you go to the left, you're going to pop down to the parking lots. If you go to the right, you'll kind of come out towards the back of the lodge. And here we are coming back down to the parking area for the trail. And that is the Timberline Trail, all 40 or so miles of it. It's a fun one. So that's a Timberline Trail, really, really a classic trail, bucket list worthy experience. Now, again, I have all the itineraries, planning information, all that stuff is on hikingguy.com. I keep that up to date all the time. I can't update the video, but I can update the webpage, so make sure you go there. And uh, if you want to watch this video in 3D, or 360, not 3D close uh, 360 I have a link to that right under this video as well and uh, you will enjoy that but otherwise guys I will uh, see you out there any questions leave them in the comments on YouTube and I will do my best to answer them all right Timberline Trail I'll see you out there